<coughs> Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad of Dhamma with my co-host Mark Ronich with jbiztechvalley.com and Statewide News. We have a very, very special guest with us, Mr. Raymond Joyce, Albany County Legislator. If I can call you Ray, welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's great to see you again. I, you know, you're one of the regulars at the county legislature meeting. You really don't miss a meeting. Nope. You know. Haven't missed one yet. You know, let's go even back in history. The name Joyce is a very historical, well, we say I don't make you like a dinosaur, but your name really is. It's really very historical. Tell us about your family background and how it applies to the Albany County uh, uh, political machine. Well, I don't know how much time to program. <laughs> oh, really? How much time I'm going to have here, but the Joyce family goes back quite a ways, especially with Albany County. Uh, my father was involved um, um, 35 years as a county legislator until his passing. Uh, and it, before him, before it was the Albany County Legislature, it was actually the Albany County Board of Supervisors where his father, Raymond Joyce Sr., had served uh, back to 1945. So when I came in after my father's passing, um, until this date, I think next year will be close to about 70 years of a continuous uh, Joyce representing uh, West, West Albany and the Pine Hills of, uh, of, of the city of Albany on, on the Albany County Legislature. So you grew up kind of with it in your blood, so to speak. I mean, I mean you saw your father and grandfather. I know they do with rabbis a lot. You know, I mean, with yes. a lot of professions, just saying, hey, that's what my grandfather is, that's what my father is, and that's what I'm yes. going to be also. Yes, it was interesting. Growing up, my father had been on the legislature since, since, I, since I was a baby. So growing up, uh, you know, you'd, you'd wake up in the morning, and most kids, you know, they'd be up watching their... Uh, our cartoons or eating their breakfast, and I'd want to read the paper, uh, especially the Albany County News growing up, to see uh, what Dad had done the previous night. It was always interesting to me as, you know, there was a lot of history there as, as he uh, went up in the ranks in the Albany County Legislature, became chair of the legislature, uh, especially during the um, building of the, at the time, the Knickerbocker Arena, which is now the Times Union Center. Uh, it was always stories in the paper, and it was always interesting to read that in the morning and, and what Dad had done the previous night. Uh, in the Albany County Legislature. I'm, I'm curious, since you brought up the Knickerbocker Arena, uh, what was the feeling in your house when the whole Jim Coyne thing uh, broke about the kickbacks, the $30,000 and all that? It was, you know, it was different back then. You know, it's a little, uh, you know, back then Albany County, it's hard to explain. It was almost like a family. I'd go down to the county building, 112 State Street, uh, even go into the county courthouse and, and go to some of the legislative meetings when I was a kid. And, you know, it was like family. You, you know, all the legislators worked together. They worked closely with the county executive. And uh, even the employees across Albany County, you, would, you know, they would all work as one unit to accomplish the common goal of, you know, maintaining our charter, uh, providing social services to those most needy in Albany County. So um, my father worked very closely with Jim Coyne. He, I, he called him a friend, and, and uh, uh, when he got himself in trouble, um, it was it was painful for my father, and I didn't fully understand it. I knew there was some, I knew he had done wrong, and, and uh, you know it was something that uh, um, really was very upsetting to my father at the time. So that was a sad period. It was. You know. It was. Your father also ran for mayor against uh, Mayor Jennings. He did. Uh, Jerry Jennings when he was, Jerry Jennings was in the Common Council, the Albany Common Council, representing, I think, a district that might have encompassed part of your father's county seat. It was actually, uh, I believe, uh, it was. Was um, there some overlap in the district? No, no. no. The, the district was actually, he represented areas north of Albany High. My father was always uh, West Albany, the, in the Pine Hills, Upper Washington Avenue yeah. neighborhood area. Um, Paul O'Brien was actually the uh, county legislator that represented the district where Jerry oh, okay. Jennings first ran as an alderman. And uh, but Paul O'Brien was a close friend of my father's, and and I know there was uh, that was the, probably one of, his, one of the most difficult primaries I've ever seen was the '92 uh, mayoral primary. Mm -hmm. So what was um, so coming into your own mm -hmm. in the, on the county legislature? You know, you said, you know, as you said, you succeeded your father upon his passing. And uh, so you've been here how many terms now? Is it four? Going into my uh, nine years, so two, two full terms. Two yeah. full terms. So you're been, uh, so, so you're one of the more senior members. 
in the county legislature. So we're in the middle of the pack, but middle of the pack. But you're moving still, up quickly. Yeah, still fairly junior. There was, there's some folks that have been there, you know, 25. Well, 25 Gil Ethier is one. Yeah, Gil but, is one. <laughs> yeah. But are you? Do you think there should be some sort of limitations on how many terms someone should be able to run for elected office, or do you say, like a lot of elected officials say, every four years? We have term limits every four years when the voters could decide whether to reelect us or not. Yeah, there's there's some truth to that. Um, I do believe in term limits limits to an extent. Uh, I haven't really quite figured out what that would be yet, though, because uh, going into the county legislature, I really thought I fully understood it. Uh, I followed it my entire life, Albany County, and, and anything political or anything pertaining to the Albany County legislature. Um, following it my whole life, I thought when I went in, I'd have a really good handle on it and it really takes a full term to really mm -hmm. uh, get up and running and and, <laughs> and get your feet uh, you know on the ground and really uh, make a difference it's 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 quite a learning curve um, but uh, yeah I do believe in term limits so you this isn't this won't be you won't be there as long as your father and your grandfather. Were. I don't. I don't believe so. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't believe you know Albany County. I you know I, I think people like to see change too. So, uh, and that's why we see you know we just saw recently with the uh, Common Council uh, yes. quite a bit of turnover yes. uh, in the city of Albany. And I think you'll probably see that in the county legislature, if not next year. Uh, you know, I think you'll you'll see that in the years to come. And I th and at one time the county legislature. 39 members had 17 Republicans, and yes. it was and 20 some odd Democrats. So it was close. I mean, the Republicans were very. All you needed were another two or three seats, and they could have taken over. The Republicans could have taken over the county yes. legislature. Yes. Then you redistricting happened in 2000 and the, around the 2000s, and all that went away. I think they went down to like six to ten seats or something. The Republicans. Right. And we just had another <laughs> a recent redistricting in uh, 2012, I believe it was. So yeah. every ten years. Yep. Yeah, but now they're coming back up, and they're gaining more seats. The Republicans. Yes. Yep. So do you see that as a good thing with having, you know, two parties as opposed to the Albany Common Council with just one party? And I, I do. I do. Um, it, it adds a lot to the debate, especially during the committee meetings. Um, we have the county legislative meeting itself, but we also have the committee meetings where we really go into the detail on the items on the agenda during the county legislative meeting. And uh, there's some, you know, good points made on both sides, both the Democrats and the Republicans. Um, Sometimes it's contentious, but sometimes we, we can have some common agreement. Uh, what do you see as uh, your, 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 most, your proudest moment, the thing that you, something that you just, whether it's not your initiative or maybe someone else's, that you saw get done in the county legislature? You know, there, there's a lot of little wins yeah. that we see every single month. Um, you know, a lot of things. I mean, I think when you're voting on anything on the agenda, um, I remember my father would tell me, you know, is it the right thing to do when I was growing up? Is it, you know, well, when I ever had to make a decision, is it the right thing to do? You really need to think about the effect of your decision. Um, so every single month, there's things on the agenda where I really kind of have to ask myself, is this the right thing to do? And so there's a lot of wins that I'm really proud of. Um, but I think most recently, I know you've had guests in here talking about the Albany County Nursing right. Home. Um, I think we're about to see um, a, a fairly big win here soon. What's for, the latest? What can you well, tell I us? I can tell you, um, we have had some um, discussions, I can say the legislative leaders, uh, specifically Sean Ward, Sean Morris, and Frank Camisso have had discussions with um, our County Executive Dan McCoy. And as you probably recall, last year at this time, Dan McCoy had proposed uh, privatizing the Albany County Nursing Home to Upstate Services Group, and legislators for a number of different reasons had issues with that. You know, it could be anything from the care of the residents to um, the staff to, uh, you know, basically there was also some loans and some grants were, that were attached to it. A lot of people turned out for the public comment sessions during the county ledge meetings. Yes. I was really like taken aback by how many people turned out to say the same things over and over again. It got monotonous and redundant, but speaking in volume, you know, in uh, in mass, you know, really made an impact on the the legislators' votes. I think it did. With it their did. Thinking and 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 people's 
core values too. I mean, we, you, you know, you're weighing a lot of things here. You're, you're weighing, the, you know, also we've had a historic mission here. We've run this nursing home for over 200 years now, back to when it was the almshouse. And he was providing care for the most needy in Albany County, uh, mm -hmm. care for those that a lot of private homes wouldn't care for. So that was weighing on us. And, uh, you know, with the history of my family, you know, 70 years of my father and grandfather, you know, maintaining this home for those that needed it the most, uh, for me to come in and, and cast a vote to close it was, uh, wasn't, um, wasn't possible. It wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, so the county executive proposed this lease agreement uh, with Upstate Services Group. And there were different factors. Uh, we, we saw the lease in the spring of 2013. Um, we started discussing it in both elder care and audit and finance committee meetings. And as it progressed through the months, um, it really didn't have the support in the county legislature. And what you saw was the executive, and I gave him a lot of credit because he said if you don't want to take my plan to lease this or privatize the nursing home with Upstate Services Group, then you provide me a better plan. And that's what the legislature did is they came forward and we found uh, Larry Slackey from Nassau County who runs uh, New Health, I believe the company is called. Um, he came in, he had a chance to evaluate and take a look at our home and he basically said I can um, essentially within six months I can uh, um, save you about five million dollars and in about 18 months we'll put this in the black. Um, and who is this Larry guy? Larry Slackey is a, <laughs> I think he's a vice president of operations for New Health. He, he runs nursing homes on, on Long Island. So he's a, pri runs he's a private, homes. he's with a private company. He's, he's private. Not, he's not going to be like the director of the Albany County Nursing Home or something. Right, and well okay. that's where we stand today. Uh, the news, I know we've had uh, legislators come in here and, and the county executive talk about uh, the nursing home. Uh, where it stands today is uh, uh, Mr. Slackey has spoken to uh, the county executive, Dan McCoy, and there's negotiations now to make him the administrator for the Albany County Nursing Home huh. while the Albany County Legislature creates a local development corporation to run the nursing home. Uh, with Larry Slackey in place uh, through the LDC, um, we believe we can turn it around and, and actually, uh, as Mr. Slackey had promised, put it in the black in 18 months, which will be a win for the Albany County taxpayers. Uh, but more importantly, we can maintain that mission of providing that care for those that most need it the most in Albany County, the people that um, have invested in the home. That's the one thing I heard when I, we had a public hearing and I, I put a letter out to my uh, residents, my, my neighbors and constituents. I said, we're going to have a public hearing on this nursing home issue. I really need to hear from you. I'd want to hear your thoughts and comments on this. And um, Many people had responded saying, I've invested in this home for decades through property taxes. I hope it's there when I need it. So nice. that was something that uh, uh, really solidified my decision. Nice. Yeah. So this LDC, Local Development <coughs> Corporation, is going to most likely be headed up by Larry Slackey? Well, it'll be a board of directors. Uh, a board again, of directors, yeah, we but he might be the... He'll be the administrator for the home. He'll okay. be uh, in charge of running. But the, there'll be someone else who's the chairman of the board. I, I believe so. We're, we're, it's really initial uh, in the initial stages right now. It's uh, discussions again that would have to occur uh, okay. between those that would draft the LDC. And so I think the actual. I think the the biggest question that I could imagine anyone on the county legislature asking is, where's the magic? What's he going to do? to turn this around that all these other people couldn't do over the past decade. Well, there's, there's, there's some smoking guns that are involved with that, uh, obviously filling beds. We've had even USG come in and we've asked them that through elder care and through uh, our audit and finance committee meetings when we've had multiple interviews with the uh, representatives from Upstate Services Group. Uh, we would say to them, how are you going to turn this around? And uh, the, the biggest issue we have is, is the number of beds. There's so a reimbursement rate per bed. for the. Audience, go yeah. over uh, how many beds are in the Albany County Nursing Home, how many are filled, how many are empty? Well, uh, pr well right, there's 250 beds um, in the Albany County Nursing Home. Uh, my last, I think the last report I saw, there was 213 beds that were full. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're reimbursed uh, based on uh, filled beds. Occupancy so of, you're, yeah. the, you really want to have 250 filled beds to try and get up to your... So you need 37 point. other people to come in and... Uh, who, are, who are indigent or who are not healthy or need a nursing home 
And we, we, we yeah, correct. We need and to who, fill. Who reimburses you? Uh, the state, um, uh, federal the, government. Right, right. State and fed. I think it's fifty forty. Uh, I think there's a split there between the two. Okay. Who does the other ten? Uh, well, the county. County does ten. Yeah. Okay. Well, the audience doesn't always know right, these things, so right, I need right. to uh, ask some of the simple questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have. Um, so, okay. So when you fill, so you got to find these people. This is like, I hate to say it this way. I mean, I, I don't mean it directly, but. When you talk about the county jail, you know, you need to fill the beds in the county mm -hmm. jail also, so they bring people in from, you know, overcrowded, from other counties that have overcrowding issues, and they come to Albany County because we don't have an overcrowding issue. So we take them in and we get money mm -hmm. for the county jail from the other, the other counties pay Albany County. So I'm asking about, you know, do you take, do, do you put the word out to the other counties who have a shortage of beds and say, come, we will take you? Well, that's actually the, the, the patients are there. Um, they're not in other counties, and that's part of the problem. What do you mean the patients had, are there? Well, we've... we've uh, you need 37 more, let's say. Right, and the, the issue we've had um, ongoing now for probably my entire uh, uh, career in the Albany County Legislature was the fact that um, the beds weren't always filled. Uh, there was some debate on whether or not that was intentional to show a loss uh, or whether or not it was just mismanagement. But we've had, uh, I think it was just about two months ago, the most recent report I saw, there were 70 Albany County residents that have been sent out of state because they couldn't find a bed for them in Albany County. Now, there's really? a higher, it, right, and it cost Albany County more to send them out of state because we have to pay for that too. So. What's happening is um, the private homes, they basically get to cherry pick, pick. I hate to say they use the word, but yeah. they use the, you know, the, those that are going to cause them the least amount of trouble, the patients, uh, those, those residents um, you know, that are going to be the easy, easiest for them to care for. Uh, Albany County Nursing Home, we get uh, those residents that might have dementia issues, may be combative, and because of that, um, you know, where we may have a room with two beds, if we put a combative patient in, in that room, um, we may not be able to put a resident with that person. So we end up losing a bed in, in that regard. So you know, we've discussed this at length at many uh, of our committee meetings, and uh, it's just a matter of opening up more rooms where we have to have more single bed rooms to get to that 250 bed count. The residents are there, and obviously with the baby boomers, many people entering retirement, entering their senior years, there's going to be a higher demand for, uh, for the, the beds. Do the people, do the indigent people have the say as to whether they want to go out of state or they want to stay here in Albany County? I mean, how is that decision made and who would say, no, you can't go to Albany County, you have to go out of state? Well, the way it works is if they basically ask if there's a bed and if there is no bed available, they get sent out of state. And but we have 37 open beds. We do, and but you also have an administrator say we have we don't, but we may not have any available beds because of the uh, compatible nature right. of some or, of the or, patients. Or, yeah, correct, correct. I see. Yeah. So that's why it doesn't. So you, can you put two combative pa uh, yeah. residents together in the same room and consolidate that? Yeah, I, don't, I think I think we that have, just exacerbates okay. the I think situation. Have, I think we have enough space at the Albany County Nursing Home where. We can provide enough single bed rooms to accommodate really? the combative patients, okay. or those that need to be isolated. Right. Uh, I'm just using combative I as know. an example, but and I'm going along with the yeah, example sure, just to sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, but they, um, uh, both Upstate Services Group and even Larry Slacky said the first thing I'm going to do is fill 250 beds. Great. So great. I didn't know all this, and yeah. I'm glad. I'm sure the audience didn't know a lot of this, so I'm glad that you brought this to our attention. This, sure. is, this is very interesting, it's very important, because you, know, you hear all of this, all this crying going on with the public comment session at the county legislature, and people are speaking extemporaneously a lot of times, and they really don't get their point out. And you really don't understand the message clearly, but you understand the message much more, you understand the nuances of the message, because you, you, you've probably met these people who are getting up to speak and off hours, you know, and you, you, know, you probably have heard their cries already. So they're just speaking basically to the converted. <laughs> people who already say, don't close the nursing home. Right. And the people who want to close the nursing home can't get it 
you know, that, that aren't hearing the message, you know, because they're not speaking clearly about what their passion is and what they want to do. Right. That's right. the way I see it. It's a communication issue. There is, and, and there's a balance too. You want to do, um, you want to do the right thing for the taxpayers of Albany County, and you know every decision I make, I think of my mother who uh, lives alone now after my father had passed early. Mm -hmm. uh, he never saw his full retirement, and my mother, you know, raising five kids, um, and never had a supplemental income. So she's, you know, to to maintain, uh, you know, property taxes and and you know just living in the house I grew up in. It's it gets expensive, so. You know, when we discuss things like the Albany County Nursing Home and the losses that are associated with that and the decisions we have to make, I have to think about, you know, you think about the taxpayers and think about my own mother and everybody else that lives in my district that are struggling to keep their homes. So, you know, this I think this decision moving forward with the LDC, uh, moving forward with Larry Slackey, I think is going to be a win for the taxpayers of Albany County, but more importantly, the residents, because we're going to be able to maintain that mission of providing care for them um, in the county home where no other home would regularly take them. God bless you. I'm so yeah. happy to see that this is happening Yeah, and that it's finally being worked out because I remember what last year or two years ago the contentiousness of call, name calling between the executive and the legislature and you know he doesn't know what he's doing this one doesn't know what they're doing and back and forth and there really wasn't a meeting of the mind so I'm glad to see this yeah. really happen. I think I think you're just seeing uh, you know there's the executive and legislative branches of government <laughs> everybody wants to do the right thing for Albany County and uh, the residents of the home and the yeah, future residents of the home. What's amazing is that the executive was the chairman of the legislature when this issue started mm -hmm. and when and he had a different perspective when he became executive than when he was chairman of the legislature. Well, you're wearing a different hat. That's right. Now you're that's, really, that's why I didn't say flip flop because yeah. he's wearing a different hat. Yeah, and uh, and yeah. I'll tell you, there was it was contentious. There was yeah. a lot of uh, bad blood there uh, for a year uh, between the legislature and the executive uh, executive's office. Um, but for as long as I've been on the legislature, we've been trying to find some resolve to the nursing home issue because it's been losing money. Mm -hmm. Million uh, dollars a month is what we keep hearing from the executive. Right. And those that number has changed a little bit. I heard 700,000 to a million. I heard 1.2 million. I heard as low as four, uh, 400,000. So wow, it's all over the map. It's difficult as a legislator Depends to how say, you count. well, I, you know, you really want to see real numbers and it's, it's difficult sometimes. But um, again, to give the executive credit, he said, this is the plan I'm coming up with. And if you can do better, let me see it. And right. there's been some compromise on the executive's part to entertain the local development corporation and, and uh, bringing in Larry Slackey, who was proposed by the legislature uh, as his administrator for the That must have home. been a tough discussion he had with uh, U.S., with United Services. Or... Well, I think they're still on the table. We still need, there's still, we still have to, you know, once the LDC is in place and once uh, Larry Slackey is in place, I think we can, you know, um, I think the, USG, the Upstate Services Group uh, proposal will be um, shelved, but uh, right. But you still have Larry's group that would be coming in instead, right? right? You said he's got it. What's the name of his group? Well, it'll be Larry Slackey as an administrator of the right. nursing home, but he's got a group. Well, he's in right Nassau now with. County, right? Yeah, he'll be he'll be actually leaving that group oh, uh, to okay. run the nursing home. Oh, okay. so uh, I thought okay. I thought yeah, he's bringing no. those resources with him. No, just his knowledge no, just and his experience. His... He brings a tremendous amount of uh, experience and knowledge uh, just turning nursing homes around, like you know, Albany County. Wow. That so who found them? So. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's interesting. You I understand uh, <laughs> uh, it was through discussions with another legislator. Um, I believe it was Tim Nichols, yeah. who I think you know. Sure. Um, had some discussions off the cuff with uh, one of his partners and heard that they were interested in possibly looking at managing the county home. And, you know, we brought him in. We had more discussions with him to see exactly what the proposals were. And wow. we said, this may be a better option here. Um, we talked about the local development corporation. You know, some people were concerned about, you know, the employees, whether they would be, uh, you know, kind of how would, it's the same thing as privatization. If you create an LDC, well, through the LDC, you can actually create it. We've actually structured it. Um, it's not, a, it's not uh, officially, you know, we're still in discussions. But, yeah. the, uh, but it's a public-private it is. And well, LDC is public-private, quasi-public. Right, and the county is actually proposing leasing right. the county employees <laughs> to the LDC so they'd maintain, uh, they'd maintain their county the employment. Benefits and, right. and also the, uh, not, not just the benefits, but the retirement package. Right, also, yeah. right. But plus, today, we've had folks that have been there 20, 30 years, right. and they, 
Oh, I heard. They do a fantastic yeah. job, and I just, you know, that, you know, we didn't want to, you don't want to lose that. Okay. So let me ask you this. There was also a proposal that the nursing home should be moved to the vacant Livingston Middle School. I heard on that. On that campus. Yeah. And that you can also create a long-term, uh, uh, maybe a hosp some hospice beds or long-term care and, you know, make it sort of like a Masri Center. And those, that's still in discussion, but for the current site where the nursing home is now, We've oh, okay. heard uh, Livingston, I've heard Tobin Packing, I've heard different locations for a proposed site for a nursing home, uh, but I think they're going to, I think they're going to stay with, where with they the current now. site, but and with, uh, you know, possibly, uh, you know, that's the thing where as we move forward with the LDC, we can talk about things like, um, you know, long-term care, you know, all sorts of well, different models. Well, I found models. a segue into my next topic I want to mm -hmm. talk to you about. Can you make the nursing home more energy efficient? And you work for National Grid, so that's my segue. Yeah. So can you, can. can you do something there in terms of the windows and, and heating and cooling and all that? Yeah, well, yes, as we replace units, and we just did it at the jail. I know uh, uh, Sheriff Apple has worked with National Grid through some rebate programs where they were able to change out everything from uh, heating HVAC, heating and air conditioning, to lighting um, and uh, many other energy efficiency uh, type uh, measures to save uh, money for Albany County. Are you the go-to person for this stuff to guide them? I am not. I am not. <laughs> not? But I, I have a little bit of knowledge and actually worked with, uh, uh, when I heard Sheriff Apple was looking at a few, uh, <laughs> doing some work at the county nursing home. Between, I'm, at the, I'm at, the, at the jail. I between see. you and Paul Tonko and Bill Reinhardt and the Bethlehem Town Board, we should be the greenest county <laughs> yeah, <laughs> around the most efficient. We're, we're getting there. We've, uh, we've had some discussions as we... Uh, as we replace things at the county nursing home, uh, we're talking about a roof next year, and some legislators are saying, "Well, let's let's entertain. Uh, we put it out for bid. What's uh, can we do a green roof? You know, some 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 energy efficient roof, uh, in, in, like solar, maybe. Uh, right. Or yeah. there's different. Uh, I'm not familiar with the uh, technology. It's uh, not my. Uh, uh, not it, you. Yeah, not, right. I'm, I'm, I'm on a different line of work at National so, Grid. So, so in the finally in the final minutes, tell us yeah. what you do for National Grid. What's your role there? I, uh, I work in the Eastern Regional Control Center. It's a 24-7 operation that manages all the uh, energy flows and power restorations for Eastern New York. And uh, we're there 24-7, um, you know, making sure everybody's lights stay on. And if uh, and when they go out, we're there and we're there to keep them on and get them restored as soon as possible. And this is out in Altamont, not downtown Albany, right? This is out in Altamont. Okay. Yeah. And you're the manager of it? You're the head honcho? Or? Uh, no, no. No, I'm not the head honcho. I'm the uh, uh, second in command, if you will. The, they, it's a lead supervisor is the title. Uh-huh. So, yeah. It's, but you're uh, second in command there? Uh, yes. Yeah, great. Kind of. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. So yeah. how are we doing in our energy uh, fluctuations and uh, energy much. needs? Much better, much better. I was there during the blackout of, uh, you know, when we had the issues out in Ohio that caused the whole blackout across the eastern seaboard there. And uh, I'll tell you, between the coordination between the utilities and the ISO, the independent system operator, yeah. which manages all the utilities, uh, we have a much stronger system. Okay. And what would you like to add that we haven't talked to you about? What do you want the audience to know about you that they might not know? I think we covered, we covered quite a it. bit. I really okay. appreciate the so opportunity to come what are, and talk. What are your uh, frustrations on the county legislature? Frustrations, that's a good question. Um, again, like our wins I talked about, there's now I want every, the losses. Every, <laughs> I want uh, the every month there are frustrations, and it's, it's uh, I wouldn't say the frustrations as much as you just have to understand that everybody has a different opinion and it doesn't mean that it's wrong. You really, you know, everybody, even just going back to the nursing home, everybody has a different thought um, uh, process on what's what's best. And, you know, I think it's a kind, it's not, I'm not always saying my way is the best. I think it's a combination of everybody's ways. But I think the frustration is uh, um, legislators and uh, just not listening to each other, and maybe not even listening to the executive, uh, the lack of communication sometimes. I think if we, uh, worked more closely together and uh, really understood each other, we'd get a lot more done. Okay. All right, we're out of time. It was very interesting. Thank Ray, you. we give you a blessing there. You should continue doing good work for Albany County and Thank grow you. and be successful in all your ways. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.